Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, once again to another exciting Vobe show. I'm Richard Vobes. It's the 3rd of April 2019. It is Wednesday evening, and I'm back. Yes, I am back, ladies and back in uh, a cleaned up studio, you may notice. Uh, and I'm sitting down. I'm not sort of larking about uh, as I was uh, the last time you saw me, but that's OK. That might still happen. Now, I need to make sure that you, A, first, first of all, you can see me and B, that you can hear me. And third, Thrid, can you smell me? Sniff. Sniff the air. Oh, I smell. I've got a very, uh, I've got a new perfume on, ladies and gentlemen. Nice new perfume that is making me uh, very, very um, <clears throat> attractive to the uh, opposite uh, perfume set who enjoy sniffing whatever that means anyway i can see that Anne osborne first in there hello Anne. you obviously were waiting with bated breath ready to get into the vogue show very nice to see you uh, george timperley hello george uh we've got steve pilfold hello steve back from the old <coughs> the 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 pevency uh signal exchange which sounds good got a few thumbs up coming up which is great um, what else have we got? We've got Kevin Hall, Andy Joy, Matthew Holdsworth. Hello, you. Brendan Potts. Hello, Brendan. How the devil are you? I haven't seen much of you recently. Either that or I've missed all your tweets. Uh, not tweets, posts. Lovely to see you. Nigel Sadler. Hello, mate. Uh, had a lovely time with Nigel earlier today. Dancing in the mist. Dancing in the mist we were. Claire Leach is also here. Richard Suggett as well, which is fabulous. Tracy Highland. Hello, Tracy. How are you? Very nice to see you. Andy Joy. Hello, all. Have you missed me, by the way? Did you miss me? Or, you know, have you had actually had an enjoyable life since I've last been around? It'd be interesting to know. Uh, do tell me if you have. That would be great. Matthew Oldsworth. Uh, old, <coughs> sorry, I'm dropping my H's there. My H's. Dropping my H's. Matthew Holdsworth. Hello to you, Matthew. Hope you're well. Kevin Hall says, yay, he's here, <laughs> he's here. Life has meaning all over again. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Do you know, I was setting up, I was setting up the show going, oh, bloody, I've got to do a show now. <laughs> I can't remember how it all works. And then all of a sudden, uh, here it is. The, the red light goes, the bell is uh, dingling, uh, the man is waving the cue sheet, the auto cue is going up, I'm reading the script and everything is perfection personified. Uh, Chris E. Nash is there. Hello, Chrissy. Good to see you, Rich. Big thumbs up. Thank you very much. Uh, Maya. <coughs> Hello to you, Maya. Hope you're well. Um, we've got... Uh, uh, Seren, hello Seren, or Seren, 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 ha ha ha, nice to see you sir, the Julia, the lovely Julia, the lovely, lovely Julia is out there in uh, the Vobosphere, yes, hello Julia, hope you're well, uh, I've got purple on today, notice that I am, I've got the, uh, oh hello, <coughs> the telly's gone, hang on a minute, this, uh, I don't know how to make this last very long, so I'm going to have to work out how to keep that going, if I press a little button down there, <coughs> It will uh, ping. It'll ping up. It'll it'll ping up. It's going to do that. It's going to do that throughout the evening. I do apologise. I don't know. It lasts about two minutes. Um, I probably have to tell it to to not do a screensaver or something. I'm not quite sure how you do that, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's, it's technology, don't you know? Um, welcome back. Good to see you. Says John Molstat. Hello, John. Lovely to be back. I can tell you. Uh, Nigel says, OK, who's going to be the first to say, oh, yes, thank you. Kalanda, Kalanda. <laughs> We've got to do the Kalanda. So that was the last image we had on the Kalanda or calendar in some situations. And now, oh, oh that's it. <clears throat> that's the, wait a minute. That's it. We can't have run out. I think that was the last. It was it was produced a year ago. Oh yes, April two thousand and eighteen is the next is the next one. Well, that'll just have to do for the moment. April two thousand and eighteen. Oh, what a shame! There we are. Oh well, I'm a year behind. I'm a year behind. So that just goes to prove that we've been doing this nonsense for over a year. Goodness gracious, that's outrageous, isn't it? Hey ho, we'll do our best. It's still on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll have to just bend down there and press the button. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for that. Kushti Phil says, hello, and good evening. Steve Pofo says, we can see and hear you fine, but the intro VT was jittery. 
Oh, I do apologise. Um, I it hasn't been played. I've got to make a new one anyway. I've got to make. I just haven't had time. Time, gentlemen. Well, I had had time, but I've been do, I've been doing other things with it. You see, Andy Joyce says yes. We can hear you. That's marvellous. Cynthia Walder is there. Danny Harris. Good evening, Sir Vobes. Great to see you. Thank you very much, don't you know? Thank you, thank you very much. Very good. Uh, Steve Blakey. Hello, Steve. Uh, D Henry. David Allen is there. Thank you for joining me. It's very nice to see you, sir, which is great. Uh, who else have we got? Richard Suggett. Hello, Rich. Uh, tweets from someone we don't tweet. No, I, I don't tweet. I don't tweet. There's an automatic tweet that goes out. Sorry, I've got an itch on the pelvis here, on the, on the hips, on the hips, close to the pelvis. Little itch. Sorry about that. Um... Yes, I, uh, there's an automatic tweet that goes out every time I bung um, a video out, but that's it. I, I rarely look. Poor old John Berger. I don't know if he's out there. John Berger occasionally replies to my tweets, and I, I just don't see them. I don't see them. Um, Senator uh, Matthew Holter says, Like a hole. Had you missed me like a hole? Oh, thanks. He's missed me like a hole in the head. Just checking if that's still on. I will see it, but like, you know, a minute later, by the time I get the feedback on the screen here. So I. So, you know, please shout at me and say, Oh, the screen, the screen, it's gone blue, it's gone blue. <laughs> Technical hitch. Tracy Highland says, uh, um, I'm very well, thank you. How's your, what did she say? How's your, oh, how's your good self? I thought for a moment she said, how's your end? Yes, the end is fine. <laughs> the end is near. Maybe I need to get a placard. The end is near. <laughs> the Vobes is... Uh, yes. Um, Neil Gardner. Hello, Neil. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for tuning, tune, 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 tuning in. And uh, uh, Serena. Hello, Serena Kirkham. Good evening. Thank you so much. If there's a bit of a delay, a bit of a lag, a bit of a lag between me seeing your tweets, uh, not tweets, I mustn't say tweet, uh, a lag between me seeing your comments, as you, that's, that's, it's mainly because I'm a bit slow in the head. Um, but uh, no, it's it's because of the comments come up and I don't always keep on top of them, but I do try. So hang around, because if you made a comment, I will try and see it, uh, but I don't always get everything. So just so that you know, Kevin all says about time you got back. Thank you. Andy Joy, it's been very way too quiet, way, way too quiet. Can you hear the Twitty birds? Tweet, tweet, Twitty birds, Twitty birds. What a pity the Twitty birds are there. They are. Welcome back. Marcus says, uh, Stevie. Uh, Mark McLeod, how are you, sir? Nice to see you. Brilliant. Steve Pilfold says the TV screen behind is half a degree tilted. What do you mean half a degree? Oh, because what you mean? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I think you'll find what it is, is this shelf is only Dexian. Look. It's very wobbly. It's precarious. So you're lucky it's there at all. I don't know. He's, he's already on my case. He's already on my case. That's Steve Pilford. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you're back, are you? You're back. Oh, I see. Hang on. Oh, I see. Yeah. But um. Well, your your TV screen's tilted. Yeah. TV screen tilted. Get that sorted, Vobes. Uh, you'll be okay. But the top is mis oh misaligned now. Misaligned. The edge of the frame. So uh, there is a wedge of light. Enjoy the light, Steve. Enjoy the the, the light. Has come back to you. It's it's here. Uh, Steve Pilfold. Oh dear. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh dear. Uh, Ted Dosborough. Uh, Ted Desborough. Thank you. Todd Desborough uh, is here. Thank you, T Todd. Shirley. Thank you for the check, Shirley. Thank you for the check. She's uh, written me a, a, a two million pound check, um, <clears throat> which is which is very nice. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Cooper and Stuart Douch. Uh, power saving. Oh yeah, power. Oh, it's power saving. Is it? I want to save the power. Hang on, I can just keep. I tell you what's operating that. What's operating this is a little laptop down there. Chromebook, about a six-year-old Chromebook. It's about all it can do. Do you know when I got my Chromebook about six years old, it could get uh, things like um, Facebook and it could get YouTube. It could play YouTube videos very nicely. Thank you very much. You know when you're away, open up the Chromebook. Um, but now it will only play YouTube videos in a four four twenty. If I if I put it on seven twenty, um, what is it? Four sixty rather. If I put it on seven twenty or ten eighty, it it moans. It 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 jars. It can't play it at that. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's YouTube. It should be able to play that little old Chromebook. So. Um, it's the way they get you to buy new stuff, isn't it? That's what it is. It's the way they get you to buy new stuff. Dean Cooper. Hello, Dean. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming. Laura. Nice to see you, Laura. 
Uh, Todd's here. Oh, I said that. Claire Leach. Hello, Claire. How the, how are you? Uh, are you still un- Are you still um, <clears throat> joining the great? Are you uh, are you a lady of leisure? Are you? Are you a le- We've got a walk coming up, haven't we? Which will be great. That'll that'll uh, cheer you up. That will cheer you up. Stuart says, the "Evening, Richard, and the Vobosphere. Yes, the big Vobosphere that is all around us." Colin Charles Cox. Hello to you, Fiona Cooper. Hello. How are you, Fiona? It's nice to see you the other day, by the way, when we went to Ashdown Forest. Do you know? Here's a funny thing. That uh, I haven't been to Ashdown Forest. You know, on that walk. For years, for years, I haven't been to Ashdown Forest and then went on Saturday, which was great. And then today I drove on the same road past all those car parks, you know, the Roman Road one and the Diddly Donkey one and the Wiggly Woo one and the whatever the silly names they've got, whatever they are. And and then I went down the hill because I was out today up to a place called... um, Modest Corner. <laughs> yeah, no, nice. Modest Corner, imagine that. Eugene. Hello, Eugene. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along. James DeWill. Everyone's everyone's out today. Well, of course, uh, the Vogue show, though it says on Facebook Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, that is actually now a bit of a myth that I need to change that because the next show will be probably next Wednesday. It'll be a, a week. I'm uh, starting very uh, easily. I'm easing back into it, ladies and gentlemen, easing back into it. Daniel is there. He says, hi, Mr. Vobes. Hello, Daniel. Hope you are well, uh, which is great. I know you've all been commenting. I need to... Oh, hello. Why is that doing that? Stop. Every time. Why is that? that... Hello. I'm just going to twiddle it that way. Uh, David says, uh, get the spirit level. No, it's, it's the, the, the decks of your nuts need tightening. <laughs> I need my nuts tightening. Maya is saying, is that an image of your front door? Love the pink door. Where's the p- image of a front? Oh, there, yes. You see, well, actually, to be honest with you, this is a bit of a cheeky thing. This is an old screen. An old screen from the days when I used to do the podcast, the Vogue show. It was originally a podcast for about 10 years. And I did it from a beach hut. From a beach hut in Worthing at the edge of the South Downs at the foot of the English Channel is the Vogue show. It used to be coming from a beach hut. Now it's... um. It's, I don't know where, what I can get away with. What can I call? I couldn't call this the beach hut again because everybody knows it's in my back room. So, um, yeah, and the beach hut in the basement of the beach hut, not that you have basements in beach huts, but I had a basement in my beach hut. Um, there, was, uh, there was Eric, little Eric. He was down there. He was archiving the show. He was, he was good at archiving the show. Uh, Ian Beddoes. Hello, Ian. Lovely to see you. Thanks for cop- popping in. Uh, all the way from up there near Manchester. Uh, which is great. And Mark Selwood. Marvellous. Marvellous. Lovely. I'm going to be coming down to Cornwall, Mark. I shall be going. I shall be driving through the wall of corn to get to see you. And we're going to do some walks together. And that's going to be fantastic. Uh, so that's good. Mark McLeod says he's alive. You can hear the birds and the trees. And he's alive, which is great. Steve Pulford says, I'll come on the show and hold it for you uh, in a few weeks. That would be great. Steve? You are very, very welcome to come on the show. It would be great. We'll have a laugh. We'll have, have you got... If you come on the show, Steve, you've got to bring... You must have a spare one. You've got to bring one of the signal handles. Have you got, that would be amazing. We'll get a box. We'll get a box. Uh, George Timp- Timperley tells me, George, you're watching, you've got the signal bit, haven't you? If we could get Steve... Who, who does this business in his box and we could rig up a little signal and every time he he finds fault with the show, which I know is all the time, but every time he finds a fault or has a, a little pedantic point to, to make out, just to correct the vote, because, I, you know, I love to learn these things. I love to learn. Um, I'm being I'm being a bit cheeky now, aren't I? But you could pull that lever and we could get, you know, the message on the signal um, and, you know, or a boo, hiss, boo, one of the, maybe not, <clears throat> maybe not, but lovely to have you on the show. It'd be great. You must come. You must come. Uh, Mark says, welcome back, which is great. Thank you, Mark. Steve Pulfo says, the screen, the screen, oh, the screen. No, it's no, the screen, <laughs> you lie, it's still all right. As long as I do that, you'll have to come and tell me how to stop the power saving mode. It's, 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 it's working. All right. We can put, we can put other pictures on there, you see, you can put, the, how I would change them, I do not know. I have no idea, no inkling of that. Now, later on in the show, ladies and gentlemen, later on in the show, the big reveal. The big reveal, ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's show. Something to keep you watching. 
Uh, you, some of you who've watched The Bald Explorer may remember I did a video with the lovely Mr Suggett the other day. Not the other day, a few weeks ago now. And we were planting seeds. And uh, one of the seeds that we were planting um, w were um, radishes, radish seeds. And here, ladies and gentlemen, are the radishes that have grown a little bit. And I spoke to Mr Suggett not so long ago and he said, oh, they're probably ready for uh, harvesting. I love the way... He, he uses the old farming terms. This is always very interesting, uh, you know, in his allotment. And harvesting a few potatoes and harvesting a bit of rhubarb. I don't know. It's a problem, isn't it, Nate? Tonight, Mrs. Wright, you're harvesting the rhubarb. Yes. You know, so I thought we would pull up. I can't use harvesting. I'm not I'm a farmer. Hello there. I'm Farmer Piles, I is. Um, I'm not a farmer, see. So I thought what we might do is pull up, not the rhubarb, but actually uh, we might pull up the radishes. Might to pull the radishes out, you see, into the big reveal. The big reveal in tonight's show. Well worth coming to the show and wasting an hour of your life to watch. How exciting is that? Just checking the screen. Uh, wow, snazzy new studio, says Mark Sell. Well, yes, it's a whole new... I've got people now, ladies and gentlemen, people. Uh, there's people over there who are doing very important things. There's a, a man on a bicycle. Uh, there's a, a woman over there lifting some weights above her head. And uh, there's a bloke sitting up and lying down, sitting up. And, oh, and lying down, sitting up again. And, and uh, there's a lot of people here seeming to, and sweating. They're sweating away in the background, making the show perform as a pucker show, as, as a real life thing. I may have made some of that up, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Linda Kane. Hello, Linda Kane. How are you? How are you? Did you ever, Linda, did you ever, when, you know, when you were a, a, you're still a young whippersnapper, I know that, but, you know, in your, in your younger days, Linda, did anyone ever call you sugar? Sugar? Sugar Kane? I know, you probably had that millions of times, didn't you? Hello, sugar. Hello, darling. Hello, sugar. I just thought of it. I just thought of it. Be fair. That's the first. That's the first time I've thought of that, Linda. As I saw your name, Sugar. I, I, anyway, <clears throat> I know. Slap on the wrist. <laughs> Please don't disappear. Uh, Macintosh Pam. Hello to you, Macintosh Pam. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, Claire Leach says, as I was having problems making comments, but now it's all been resolved. Yeah, I think it's something to do with using your fingers. On the, I know, I know, I'm being facetious. Facetious, Mr. Phobes. Uh, Mark Selwood says, um, can we have vobing reports on the screen behind Richard? Um, well, you can. Somebody's got to send them in for, for one thing. You've got to have these vobing reports sent in. I have got no vobing reports, but you're very welcome to send a vobing report. It doesn't have to be places you've gone because this is the vobe show. You, I would like you to, I would like this time for vobing reports and you can use your phone to do this like a little vlog. A message, a message, a message to me. You know, it's like, oh, hello, Richard. I'm uh, sitting in my hot tub at the moment. Well, no, don't send send you sitting in the hot tub. Uh, I'm sitting by my pool having a chinzano. It's nice. I'm having a chinzano and um, I I'm having a lovely time enjoying the show. I just thought I'd share a little moment of uh, me uh, reading the paper. Just a little, you know, a little one minute, no more than a minute, one minute little vobing report. And if you do do it, hold your phone that way when you record it, not that way, please, please, not that way. We did have all this last year and you know what, people completely ignore it. That's still still there. That's marvellous. Um, so that's good. Hang on. I've got loads of comments coming in. I'm tr trying to get to them. Uh, Jamie Kensit. Hello again. Hello, Jamie. Thank you for coming. Sorry I've taken a while to get to your comment. I do apologise. Uh, Clearly, she says, yes, I'm a lady of leisure for the time being. But, she says, I deserve it. I deserve it. And, and do you know, you can go round to Claire's house and you'll find her there with one of those um, feather boas. Very nice. And uh, a long, uh, one of those cigarette holders, you know, that had in the 30s, a great big long one. And a cheroot plugged into the end and she's on her chaise longue ladies and gentlemen you can just imagine this is the sort of lifestyle that claire has she's on her chaise longue little poodle on her lap with these long thingy uh, and the cheroot smoking away like this and uh, <clears throat> she's probably got um 
It's probably got, you know, a pearl, pearl necklace around here, diamonds in her ears, and, um, and some, some little, little bald man. When I, not me, but some little, you know, little, little, little running around person who, who is, you know, there holding out um, an array of different mixers to go with her chinzano, uh, or whatever it is that you have. And um, yeah, you know, lady of leisure in uh, in uh, s s where, where is it? Sea Sea not Sea Haven. It's not, there's no place called Sea Haven, is there? There's Peace Haven. You're not in Peace Haven. It's sea, sea, what is the name of the place where you anyway where you live? Sea Haven is nice, isn't it? I like that. Sea Haven. No, yes, I'm here. The vows are languishing here, watching whilst eating a few grapes and tucking into a bit of caviar at the same time. That's how I imagine. Claire, that you're um, that you how you watch the show, and I think that's probably you know pretty accurate, really. Um, it may it may be a slight wild invention. Anyway, James DeWill says hello again. Dropping off. That's the internet. Yes, I'm sorry, we still have that problem. Uh, Mark Sewer says me and Nikki have been to Waltham Abbey today. Oh blimey, Waltham Abbey. That's nice. Uh, no doubt the pictures will be appearing on the uh, Bald Explorer group, which would be great. Tracy Highland says good evening, uh, Marie Poole. Good evening to Marie Poole. Vicky, uh, Vicky is there. Vicky Longdon. Hello, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Richard Suggett. Is Eric still around? No, I'm afraid um, at the moment Eric's out of breath. He has been responsible for all of this uh, whilst I was away. So, uh, yeah, he's not here. He's not here at the moment. Uh, what else have we got here? I'm just I'm skimming down because a lot of people talking to themselves, which is fair enough. Uh, Steve Pilfall says the levers are steel and about eight foot long as they go under the box. Take a hacksaw to work tomorrow, Steve. A hacksaw. OK, we only need that much. Uh, if it's steel, <coughs> you'll be able to bring it into the studio. That's all right. Then uh, I'll tell you what, as a prize for being on the show, I'll give you two tubes of Araldite. And then you can mix the Araldite and stick the, the end back on and no one will be any the wiser. What do you think? Good plan, eh? Good plan. Ian Beddo says we'd be better, that is, if the fires are cust... Oh, hang on. Better if it fires custard pie. Oh, thank you. This is Ian Beddoes. He wants custard pies fired into my face. Thanks. I can tell you that ain't going to happen. <clears throat> That's not going to happen. Maya says, uh, giggling away here, how I have missed the show. Oh, ha -ha! Well, the, the aim of the show now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to do anything serious in the show. This show is a moment of uh, levity. It's a bit of comedy, a bit of relaxing your brain. Nothing heavy, no politics, no nothing solid, uh, nothing serious, nothing boring, nothing that will make us all switch off. So let's all talk about Brexit, shall we? Isn't it interesting how at the... Mo no, 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 no. This is a Brexit-free zone. You'd be pleased to know about that. Uh, Eugene is uh, saying you could fix the power saving mode on air, a real cliffhanger. <laughs> fix it on air? It means I've got to go down there and fiddle. And fi you just get my backside in the end as I'm bending down trying to sort out the screen. That's no good. I'll have to do it in a private moment when there's nobody about. Uh, mine are ready, uh, says Richard Suggett. Talking about <laughs> the big reveal, which is coming up very soon, ladies and gentlemen. Very soon in a place near you, the big reveal. Will there be radishes and how big are they? Woohoo! Should be exciting. You will be reaping a radish. Yes, I will be reaping a radish. Gosh, th this is how far back the uh, comments are, aren't they? Uh, Robert Crosser says, Matthew Holdsworth, thank you. Oh, Steve Pilford says, uh, didn't Colin Furs build a beach hut with a basement in the beach? I'm sure Matthew Holdsworth or Eugene Mark Scully will know. I'm not quite sure who Colin Furs is, uh, but I did see a bloke on uh, th on the internet. Maybe that was him who built a, a beach hut. I think he did it in something like 48 hours or, you know, an afternoon. And he had dug this thing and, um, yeah, something like a million viewers, as I recall. I can't remember his name, but maybe that's the same bloke. The wall behind you, worryingly, looks like a cell, says Mark Selwood. Yes, and who would know? Who would know that? Hmm? Hmm? Looks like a cell. OK, so this is the Vogue show coming from E... Floor for E... Or E1. East 1. We could call it East 1, the East 1 show. Yes, I'm from East 1. This is... Um, 
you know, the condemned cell. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm in the condemned cell, condemned to do a show once a week for the rest of time. Oh, poor Mr. Vobe. Poor Mr. Vobe's destined to do a show for one day a week for the rest of time. Time, gentlemen. He's, Robert Cross is saying, are you in your garage? Well, that could be, yes, a garage show. We should play some garage music, shouldn't we? Only I'm not quite sure what garage music is. I always think of garage music as the sound of metal scraping on metal as you bring the door down. You know those old-fashioned, I don't know whether they're lever doors, counter lever doors. Um, you don't want to leave your door on a counter, do you? Very odd. Eugene says, great advice with the phone. Amazing how many people still film it the wrong way. Well, yes, and there's so many apps now that are designed so that you film it that way. I think um, Instagram, doesn't it? They like that you to film their videos that way. And you miss, you miss. I mean, our eyes look at things. That's why we have to, our eyes, you know, this way and not that way. Otherwise, our heads would be like this. It's, I mean, barking mad, these people. Still there. Hang on, give it another tweak. That's good. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, Edinburgh, what's he talking about? I missed a chance to do a quick video tonight for the hail shower. Oh, Eastbourne on the seafront. Eastbourne, by the way, has turned into uh, Winchelsea now. Uh, you may remember the historic town of uh, Winchelsea, which is over, you know, Hastings Way, near Rye, not too far from Rye. Lovely place, lovely place, Winchelsea. Many, many years ago in the medieval period, uh, the sea came in and reclaimed it, reclaimed it very quickly. And it seems that they b tried to be rebuild it um, and then the the river silted up a bit and um, now it's sort of a bit of a strange place uh, built on a grid by I think it was Edward the first was it Edward the first I think it was Edward the first who was responsible for that and uh, now it's washed away it's washed away and Eastbourne has gone exactly the same way Eastbourne has gone there is no such place as Eastbourne anymore it's gone the way Winchelsea is and poor old Steve Pilfold is up one of the turrets in Pevensey Castle, because that's about the only thing, surrounded by water, going like this. <clears throat> and uh, no, he's not. That's not a paddle thing. That's not one of those walker things. It's him. He's, 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 he's got a mental aberration. He thinks he's in his um, ra raised um, signal box. He's raised up signal box. And, and actually, he's got flags going, help, help. We're surrounded by water. <laughs> it's just me in Pevensey. And that is the Pevan Sea, you see? You see? You see? It's, it's all good stuff, isn't it? Malcolm Coghill is there. He says, yes, you're alive. I'm slur... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Whilst Claire is there with her chinzano, uh, Malcolm Coghill, he says, I'm slurping red wine in my office. In my office? He says, well, it's not really my office. not really my... It was my daughter's bedroom, and now it's my man cave. It's where he goes to watch the Vobes. Where do you go to watch the Vobes? Who knows? Chinzano, have you escaped from the 1970s, says Robert Croser. Oh, down here in Sussex, mate, down here in Sussex, we're well behind the uh, the jet set, the mod modernity that is up north, you know, the Cumbria and Northumberland set. Oh, they're so modern. We, we're so envious. Down here, we've still got Chinzano and... Uh, we still have, um, I'll have a baby sham. We, have, we still have that baby sham for breakfast. Um, <clears throat> shambolic shows in the evening. We have it all here, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, and we've got we've got one of those lazy Susans. You remember those <laughs> lazy Susan? We all, we've, you know, and we, we have those, um, what are those bubbling, um, bubbling cheese dips that you used to go and, you know, get in and people would come round. The bubbling cheese thing in a, in a, it was they was they had parties like that. It was no, you didn't put your car keys in it. wasn't one of wasn't those sort of parties. Thank you. It was I can't remember what you used to call it, but this weird bubbling cheese going on. Everyone would gather round and and you'd have a lazy Susan with all the uh, accoutrement. Accoutrement, French word by the way. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're well behind down here, down south. You'll be able to bring me up to the modern the modern times, Robert. When when I come up north. In uh, 20 days. In 20 days, I'm coming up north. So uh, come in to see you, mate. So you can show me all that modern brickwork you've got up there. You've got a lot of modern brickwork. They've been building Donald Trump's wall, haven't they? Old uh, Donald and uh, Hadrian, they've been up there. They've been making it. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Nikki Jess has arrived. Hello, Nikki. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Laura Riddle says it's blue. Oh, hello. Thank you. <clears throat> Good timing on that one. 
The, that soaring noise uh, is wood. Metal sounds more... Oh, yeah, what the... <laughs> I can't do... I can't do a a, 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 a a hacksaw sound on... I can only... I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm, I, you know, you, you pays your money, you gets your best. Simon Brown! He's back in the country, back in the UK. Blimey, Simon Brown must be the only man I know who has about a holiday every two weeks. He's always somewhere, somewhere. Never at home. Never. He says he's at home. Says he works at home. But you watch watch his Facebook chat page, and he'll be, you know, in Australia, New Zealand, in Sansaniti, wherever that is. What a pity! I don't know where Sansaniti is. Uh, he'll be in uh, Quebec. He'll be in the black hole of Calcutta. He'll be everywhere, all over the place. Be interesting. T. Pilford says, um, I've been uh, on... Oh, oh, sorry, not I've been on. <laughs> it's your time of the month, mate. Uh, he says, uh, if you'd been on, we could have done the great bus fire of Polgate video that I shot a few weeks ago back in the high street. Was on the BBC and ITV. The great bus fire of Polgate. Gosh, that sounds like something out of Tales of uh, Old Sussex, doesn't it? Uh, the Great Bus Fire of Polgate. How lovely. Thank you very much. Alex uh, Alex has joined us. Alex, Mr Whitlock. Mr Whitlock. Whis- Whiplash, we sometimes call him. We don't, actually. I've just started calling him Mr Whiplash. Hello, Mr Whiplash. Uh, and Mark Selwood says, Please don't dumb down the Vogue show if we've got used to the highbrow, <laughs> intelligent conversation. Yes, I do apologise. It is very highbrow on this show, yes. In fact, uh, the lovely Julia did threaten to come in today and paint my brows even higher. She was going to put them right on the top of my head. I said, no, better not. We don't want everything to go foof over everybody else's heads. Robert Crosser says, E, it's like you've never been away, lad. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. E, by gum. Suck my thumb. Oh, oh. The thing is, isn't it strange? Once this show gets going, you just can't turn it off. Although we've lost 10 viewers, I've noticed. I mustn't look at the clock. That is, looking at the clock is the thing that makes you go, oh, they're all disappearing. Nobody likes it. But never mind. Sodom, I say. Uh, Henry David says, Brexit has overtaken the weather as the English people talk about it most yes well i think people have given up haven't they they've given up they haven't given up with the weather we can still hold our breath for the weather and uh, tilt our head backwards and pray for good sunshine um but uh we we um brexit i think uh i think we're we're, we're going in the right direction we are eventually i've got a horrible feeling i don't want to say it but hopefully we're going to leave with the uh, wt terms what they call no deal this is a deal there's a deal there let's not get onto it but hopefully it's like oh we're inching towards it i mean whoa what a, it's, it's so exciting I, I might be the only one who's really interested in it, but there we are. Uh, Malcolm says, uh, Colin Fuzz builds mad things. Taz, he's a built... He, oh, he's uh, done a beach hut. Yes, I, he didn't he build a something that, like a, a... He used the hovercraft principle. I think I saw that. Uh, he gets sponsored by people like Ford and things like that, which is really cool. Um, I Didn't I see him do something with Tuk Tuk's uh, video game, but in real life? It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It seems to ring a bell now. Put some prog rock on. I don't know what prog rock is, to be honest with you. Is that um, the very lovely, and I can't bring it to hand because I've packed them away now. Mark Selwood sent me some Cornwall rock. Cornish rock, you know, like seaside rock from Cornwall. Is that the same as, pr- pr- what are you calling it? Prog what rock. Stuart Hill. Hello, Stuart. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming on. Um, we've been going for half an hour, so what's your excuse? You want to let her in, please. Richard Suggett says, that's my biggest annoyance with Instagram. Yes, that you have to film it that way and not that way. It's a bit of a daft thing. Mr. Burger. Hello, John. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. We were talking about Twitter and how I don't reply to your tweets when you tweet to me. Uh, it's because I don't look at Twitter, you see. So email me. E- I just tell people, email me. Richard at Phobes dot com. I've got a very snazzy email address. Snazzy because it's my name. It's very easy to remember it. And that's where I get my messages. And all this like messages to Facebook, I, I miss them. I forget them. That I get comments on YouTube. That's much easier to understand. Facebook, they go all over the place and I can never sort of tally them up. Uh, whereas email is so much easier. I can I can get them there and I can easily and far more Far better. I can I can just completely ignore them, um, which is nice. David says that all my videos are landscape 
uh, so on Instagram you only see the middle square. I know it's it's barking, isn't it? I wouldn't bother. I would I don't put anything on Instagram really. Mark Selwood says doesn't Facebook live on a phone go portrait? Confuse me. People kept saying we get sore necks. Yeah, don't chop your head off. Uh, Steve Pilford says, I'm going to have to change the name of the village to West Ham on Sea. West Ham on Sea. Why, why, is, why is that? Um, not quite sure what you mean by that. I, over my head. Laura says, I'm watching from Polegate. Uh, and I, and it's still there. Good. You're on top of the pole, I expect. Knowing, though, isn't it? You're on the pole. Someone opens the gate. <laughs> I hope that uh, sound was uh, acceptable. Um, and, you know, you're, one minute you think north is this way and someone's opened the gate and there you are. You veered all the way round. So it's all a bit barking. Uh, Claire. Claire Leach is there. Shinzano on the go. Cheroot going up. The old um, extended uh, cigar cigarette holder. What have you. Oh, pat, pat, pat on the ball bit. The bald man like Benny Hill used to do. Yeah, what do you say, Claire? She says, Salt Dean. Salt Dean. Oh, yes. What did I say? Seaside something, didn't I? Salt Dean is where I live, Richard. There's a, a hailstorm yesterday. We had hail. Hail the storm. <laughs> you know, call the storm Caesar. Call it Caesar. Hail the Caesar. Oh, we've got a few love hearts coming up, which is which is great. Um, oh, now it's doing this funny thing. Look, I've got, I've got that little uh, menu down the bottom there. So uh, that's a bit of a blow. Uh, Fiona Cooper says, Uckfield is where I live. Hello, Uckfield. Yes, that's it. Tell me all where you live. Well, actually, the water used to come up to where Pevensey Castle is. Yes, that's very true. That is, that is a moment of truth uh, has come up. It's now about half a mile inland. Facts you will find out on the Bald Explorer Group walk on the 2nd of June. He's compiling notes, ladies and gentlemen. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, sti, pil, fold, and his notes. Which is going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. Uh, fondue. Yes, fondue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fondue. There we go. I knew somebody would know. Funny, Robert Croser, you're up there in the modern world. You wouldn't know about fondue. That's all back. That's in back in throwback land. You don't know about that. Chinzano with cheese and pineapple on sticks. There you go. Fiona Cooper. Dean's got a lazy Susan. Ding dong, has he? <clears throat> Hang on. I've worked out now. I can see when it goes. There it is. Um, I'm, there's a packet of straws on a box on the other side of the studio and I can see the reflection when it goes blue. So that's uh, that's a little like a little blue light goes on and tells me, which is rather good. Um, Abigail's party. Blimey. Yeah, there you go. I shall and put you in, in the pillory. The lovely Julia and I are going to be put in the pillory, which is great. It, isn't that one of those very large... Um, you've got these very large... Uh, what do you call them? Uh, like, they're like churches, circular... Uh, long, long tower, tubular, tubular tower. And uh, I think uh, old What's-His-Face is in there um, playing his bells. Who was the bloke who did tubular bells? Uh, uh, Mike Oldfield. He's in this tubular tower with a conical thing, I understand. If I remember rightly, up round there, you know, near Scotland, anyway, you've got these these towers like this, very, very narrow, very, very long and narrow, and when the raiders used to come, what I understand, because the door is quite some way up and they'd have a ladder and they'd climb up the ladder and get into the door. And when the raiders would come from abroad, they would pull the ladder inside and shut the door and bolt themselves in. So these people couldn't actually get in unless they built their own ladder. Of course, eventually they're bound to get in. But um, at least, you know, you had a little bit. It gave you a bit of protection up there in your little in your little tower. I'm sure that. Once they broke in, you were murdered in your bed. Um, that's quite how we got to there. Oh, well, that's the that's the pillory you're going to put me in. Oh, yes, I remember now. Um, Kevin Hall says, um, we'll dish out the brown and mild. <laughs> yes, brown and mild. <laughs> yes, that's that's right, Kevin. Uh, Mr. Crowser is going to give us brown and mild. Blimey. Uh, that's That goes back a bit, doesn't it? Steve Pilfall says, um, it was the first thing to happen in Polgate since Janet from the Chinese takeaway was murdered by her husband and buried under the patio. True story, apparently. Janet was murdered by... Was it Janet and John? Was it John? Was it John that murdered her? She, she'd she got her own... Um, she'd probably been posing in uh, a blue 
Bird, Bluebird. Well, they were Bluebird books, weren't they, Peter and John? She was... Pros oh, I thought it had gone blue then. Um, in those Bluebird books? It's funny you call... No, they're not Bluebird. Ladybird. Ladybird. She's probably, you know, the, the joke doesn't work now. <laughs> The joke, I've got the wrong thing. Oh, never mind. Anyway, it's an interesting story about the murder. Thanks for bringing it up. Elizabeth Housden. Hello, Liz. Uh, your television shrunk. Your telly shrunk. Got it working. Had to wash it, but it shrunk. But it's nice. It's, it's, it's very nice. It does go blue from time to time. Um, that's what I hope, says Henry. Uh, let's leave on WTO rules is a man after my heart. There we go. We, we're getting, we're edging to it. It's just so good. Um, Steve says, Vobes doesn't listen to House or Garage. He only listens to Granny Flat. Yes, that's right. I do. Sometimes I like a little bit of chimney music. Chimney music is very nice. <laughs> Chimes with me, don't you know? By the way, saw a very large pendulum today. Uh, but we won't go into that. To, to, I think we'll save that for another occasion. That's very kind. The calendar is worse on Gogglebox. Um, what do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean by that. Dan Thompson. Hello, Dan. Lovely to see you. Uh, that's, I'm slowly catching up with the comments. Dan says, I've missed you so much, Mr. Vobes. Oh, what a shame. I'm so soggy. I'm so soggy about that. Uh, which is very nice. Dean Cooper says, Cornish cream tea. You must try one. I will. When we go down, Mark is going to show me all the hackneyed, cliche Cornish things. We're going to go down one of those old tin mines. He's going to seal it up. I'm going to be stuck down there. Be doing the Vogue show from there. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, which will be, you know, uh, great. Um, Reem. That's an interesting name. Reem. Hello, Reem. Hosin. Do you know how to get? How, do you know how to get IMO back the app? I, I have no idea what you mean. I, I can barely understand. <laughs> Reem, nice name. Uh, are is there five hundred sheets of you or just the one? Uh, it's very nice of you. Do you know how to get IMO back the app? No idea. If anyone can uh, decipher that. That would be great. Henry says the Uckfield Thummer. Uh, I never got to do that. What is the, Uck, Uck, the Uckfield Thummer? That sounds interesting. Alex, uh, Mr. Whiplash is saying uh, master. Master Whiplash. Master Whiplash, if you don't mind. He says, I'm getting um, a lot of dropout. Is this confined to the hills of Lancashire or more widespread phenomena? Hang on a minute. Eric, pedal faster. Faster. Get more volts going. We need a few more volts to keep it all going. Mark McLeod says, where I live, uh, Colne, Lancashire, thy nose. Thy nose. What's the matter with your nose? Only the nose knows what the nose knows. And if the nose knew, he wouldn't let you know, would he? I have a fond... He, Robert Crowser has a fondue often. Yeah, I bet you do, cheeky man. Uh, Tracy Highland says, I'm in Slough. Slough is very nice. Home to Thunderbird. Thunderbirds are go. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, 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 bum, 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 bum. Yes, Slough. It's uh, somewhere in one of those, um, you know, those... Well, that's where it happened. Marvellous. Uh, I never went there, uh, but I uh, used to watch the programme, like so many people did. Robert Croser says, yes, uh, call a brooch, I'll show you one. Oh, the brooch, the big... Yes, please, we want to go there. By the way, Robert, on a serious note, we need to start making a list and, and a schedule because it's only 20 days away, and um, I'm very much looking forward to it, and we need to get a schedule for the lovely Julia, the lovely Julia uh, and I when we shoot up. Poles, says Linda Kane. Um, poles? Poles of sugar, Linda. Poles of sugar. Dean says, my Susan is lovely. Perfect shape too, says Dean. Yes, of course she's lovely. Of course she is, your Susan. Uh, but she's a bit lazy, be fair. Uh, Mark says, um, pillory. I thought the stocks for both of you... Um, both hands, feet and the head. Oh, yes, the pillory. Yes, but then you can fire rotten tomatoes at us or throw cabbages, mouldy cabbages. I don't want any mouldy cabbages coming my way. Thank you very much. Uh, Henry says, I've got a video about someone called Janet coming up soon. Watch this place. Oh, Janet and John. 
what not one of those films, is it? Uh, Mr. Whiplash says, odd, beer field seems lock solid. Can message, but the Vobes show has frozen totally. Yeah, it is cold here, actually, to be honest with you. The temperatures have dropped down a bit, so that's probably what it is. Paul Watts. Hello, Paul, mate. Lovely to see you. Thank you for joining. I'm back. You can't keep a bad penny down, can you? He's back. He's back with a vengeance. Uh, Fiona says, Uckfield Festival, apropos of nothing. Dean says, when we did our walk last Saturday, I was wearing a T-shirt from Griever Tin Mine. That's in Cornwall. Well, if I had only known, Dean, if only I'd known, I would have um, I would have put money in your tin, money in your little tin. That's what I would have done. And then I would have taken it from you and said, that tin's mine. <laughs> that tin's. Oh, never mind. The lovely Julia. Says uh, to Cheryl, oh, we need to arrange a meet up if you can if you can do it. Yes, we've got to meet up, Cheryl. We've got to meet you up, uh, beat you up, not beat you up. We've got to meet you up. Come over from Ashington. We're going to be in Brampton. You can get over to Brampton. We'll meet you halfway. That'll be all right, won't it? It'll be lovely. Lovely to meet you. The lovely Julia is itching to see you again. Oh, I've seen a scratching all over. It's a nightmare. Uh, Henry says, I meant to say thumper. Oh, I beg your pardon. They were the trains which ran to Uckfield in 2005. Not bumper trains. That would have been much more interesting. Uh, I think that's why old uh, Beechings got the axe out because of the bumper trains. <laughs> he didn't think it was a good idea. Boing, boing, boing. Uh, Steve Pilfold's trains are not bumper trains unless he gets the signals wrong. And then there's a catastrophe. Mark McLeod says he's back. And to prove it, he's here. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. And do you know this hour has nearly gone very well? Nigel Brazier. Hello, Nigel. Thank you for tuning in. Lovely to see you. Cheers to you, sir. Now, it's uh, 15 minutes till the end of the show. I am only doing an hour tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm only doing an hour. Leave them wanting more is the expression. Um, and the reason for that is I'm halfway through an edit. Mr. Um, uh, Sadler and I were out and I'm, I'm editing up. I got in, I got the SE lit, started to edit up the thing, got a message from Mr. Kevin Hall, who said on, it, on, his, on his phone, breathe in, relax, take it easy. I thought, hang on, mate, I'm trying to edit up Friday's video because I'm out tomorrow and then I'm out in the evening tomorrow and I'm just a busy man, you know, and there's no time and I've got to get these edits done so they don't do themselves. They don't do themselves. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to be opening the radishes in any moment now, ladies and gentlemen, any moment now, which is going to be very exciting and I know you're going to be thrilled to see it, which is great. Henry says that no John with Janet, but we do see the ghost of Bill. Oh, I'm I'm fascinated. Do let me know because I don't see all of the videos because uh, I've sorry, I've got another itch on the uh, <clears throat> in, a, in a private place um, in my house. Actually, that's a private place. Uh, so just let me know when that one comes up. Be interested. Steve Pilfo says, and finally, Richard has caught up with the comment. Oh, yes, I have finally caught up with the comments. It's a nightmare. Uh, Steve Pilfer says, let's not talk about getting the signals wrong. I try to think about 1,500 people on each train going at 90 miles an hour. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. But whatever you do, you know, don't put your feet up. on Because you know when you can put your feet up and you've got your cocoa in your in your uh, little box there, as I'm sure and you read in the paper, you read in, the, I don't know, the Daily Mail to get your blood going, you know, just to make sure that the heart is pumping fast enough. That I can imagine you there with your feet up on the... On these things and and you know something no oh no they don't do they and you kick off literally kick off and <laughs> the the signal goes bing and the train's coming along you know the man with his hands on the dead man's handle like that they have to make the noise don't they in the trains now because they're electric and they don't make those noises and so they physically have to do that's the only way they know they're going I mean, you know, it's. I used to know a chap, very nice chap called Paul Stoneman, who is now living in Portugal. Lovely bloke. He used to work on the trains. He was a train driver, and I always used to. He said, "Oh, you know, it's very hard, hard work. It was very hard work." I said, "Oh, is it really?" Yeah. He said, "Boop, boop." Every now and then, hand on this. Jigadum, jigadum. All you got to do is stop and start. All you got to do is stop and start. You don't even have to steer. I mean, like, my, at the same time, another mate of mine was a bus driver. And, I mean, he had all the traffic and the traffic jams and people walking in front of it and push chairs coming on and all of that. And him ding, ding, and hello, driver, why are you this? And, and all this. And he's like, you know, I haven't got the right change. And he had all of that. And he was paid so much less than a train driver who's got his hand on the dead man's thing and he's boop, boop. <laughs> Didn't even have to steer. Didn't even have to... It's amazing. 
It was amazing. Uh, Steve, what, uh, Steve Paul Watts says uh, evening and uh, Henry is saying the video hasn't been published, but I did post some pictures uh, in the Bald Explorer group. I, I, I do try to see everything in the Bald Explorer group, but to be honest, I don't always get the chance, you know, and um, after editing, you know what it's like. You've seen screens, screens, and I've had enough of screens. And so it's, sometimes I do take a bit of a, a back seat from the group. I apologise for that. And I don't mean to, but, you know, I do try to keep on top of it. Mark Selwood says, Sir John Betjeman buried in my garden. Uh, what? Oh, in Cornwall. Found the other... What, you, hang on. You found John Betjeman in your garden buried in Cornwall. Wait, that's not right. Found out that in... Oh, in his research that John Betjeman was... Oh, fair enough. Chain drivers on 50k a year. Basic. Blime, it's gone up 10 grand. When my mate was on it, he was on 40k. And my poor train driver friend was on about 25. Half. Half, uh, my um, bus driver friend. So, yeah, it's amazing. Now, what are we doing? Time? We've got 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 10 minutes. I wanted to run through. Oh, hang on. Blue screen of death. <clears throat> it's, it's all right. I, can, I do get it, but there's a moment of. Um, there's a moment where I don't notice it, but I have noticed it. There it is. We're back. We're back on. Now, before I want to I want to just tell you about some books that I've been buying, which will benefit the show, I'm sure, in due course. And then we're going to go to uh, the big finale. <laughs> Where we see how the radishes are do doing. So we're going to aim to get, get those sorted. So um, some of the books that I've been buying at the moment. Uh, this one I read over the weekend. Uh, it's actually a brilliant book, this. Um, it's by a chap called Peter Whittle, who I don't know. Um, but I saw it. It was one of these that popped up. Uh, and it's called Being British and What's Wrong With It. It is a, you know, it's about being proud to be British and... Um, and flying the flag and all in a nice way. You know, it's not about the BMP or anything. I just talk a little bit about, you know, these these weirdos. But um, it's very nice. Uh, 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 and it's a it's a rollicking good read. Very easy to read. It t talks about the situation we are in. Funny enough, it was written about 2006, but it's very relevant today. Ten years on. Um, it's very easy. It's a nice, easy read. And it reminds you, it reminds you of... Um, warm cuddly days in a way but and then sort of asks why why are people not proud to be british it's a it's a fascinating question why and then it one of the premises is that he, he for reasons for writing um oh no was it him yes no one of the thing he said he was um in a queue waiting for something and uh he said uh he said that the two people were moaning about britain and they say, what did the Britain ever do for us? You know, like the old Monty Python sketch. What did, what does the Britain ever done for us? And uh, he talks about that and, and various other things. And then at the end, he gives, uh, I can't remember how many he gives, 25, I can't remember, or 50 or something, 50 different, 50 different, what are they, 50? I can't remember off the top of my head. So quite a lot of different things that Britain has given the world that we ought to be proud of. And everybody's got their own thing. And he just starts off this list. And it's great. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I recommend that one. That's my book of uh, the recommendation. I've got a bunch of other books here. Um, the other one that I'm going to... I'll leave the rest because time is, time is short. I haven't started reading this. But Mark, um, Mark with a Q. Good old Mr Mark English recommended this one. Hidden Histories, A Spotter's Guide to British Landscape. And it's uh, it's a great book. It uh, gives you, you know, looking as a detective on the on the landscapes of Britain. And it shows you some of the um, the ancient things, stone, stone circles, lumps and bumps and strange follies and bits and pieces. Um, it, it's a bit of a sort of a primer, really, on, on a number of these things, bridges and and. Things in the Landscape. Very interesting. I haven't started reading it yet because I've been reading lots of other stuff, but uh, all good stuff. Um, right, we're, we're, nearly, we're nearly there. We're nearly there for the radishes. Let's just have a look at the comments. comments. Screen has gone blue. Yes, thank you very much, uh, d uh, Henry. Keeps everyone on their toes, this. I might keep this the thing going blue. That's quite a good thing. Railway staff are worth every penny, says Steve Pilfold. Yes, that's right, especially when they're on strike. Uh, they're worth every penny. Uh, Claire Leach says, I have a train driver friend. Well, that's very nice. Uh, Dan Thompson says, I love radishes with butter and salt. I not, with, but with salt I get, but with butter, that's, um, that's new on me. So do I. Several were guard for several years. Yes, I, um, 
It's interesting. I mean, back in the ye olde days, do you remember back in the olde days when they when they used to wear nice heavy wool? I mean, it may be a bit bit hot for them. In the days of Will Hay, people seem to be very proud of the uh, of the the places they work. They don't seem so quite so proud. Service is is forced upon them to perform rather than you know just seem to be people seem to be much more. I don't know. There was a sort of decency, but um, and, and you see it in the old films. They're all very very. Um, you know that service. Yes, I'll get. Take your bag, madam. Of course, madam. Come this way, madam. It was all very nice. I don't know where people. What happened to that, on the railways? Now you, you know the sort of. Yeah, it's just down there, mate. I, I don't know quite what's happened. Kushti says I was a bus driver, and we always said train drivers were overpaid. Yes, well, they don't even have to steer, do they? Uh, which is a bit of a shame. Well, just as well, really. They, you know, as long as they can remember. Uh, Henry says it's the same with Peter Whittle. Uh, who was a UKIP candidate for London May. Uh, is it? I don't know. Is it? You tell me. Is it? Um, it's a, it's a, Anyway, it's a good book. I'm not judging the, the author. It was, it was a very good book. Uh, Paul Watts says, I'm very pow proud of being British. Good for you, sir. I, I join you there. That's why I've got my flag up. I've got my flag up. I'm proud to be English, and I'm very proud to be British. And um, I'm actually more proud to be English. British is my, like secondary. English first, because I'm a bit of a mad English eccentric in some ways. Um, they say if you know you're an eccentric, you're not an eccentric. So I'm obviously not an eccentric. I don't think that. But people say that to me. They say, you're a bit eccentric, aren't you? And I said, well, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? I'm not really eccentric. But they say that to me. So I'm happy to take it. It's nice. It's, you know, quirky. I don't want to be every day like everybody else. I want to be a bit quirky, a bit different, a bit stupid sometimes. Um... So English first, British second, that's for me. Uh, and so that's it. We caught up with that. Right, OK, ladies and gentlemen, radishes make me fart. Well, we're not going to go up when you've been eating radishes. If you eat radishes when the lovely Julia and I come up, we are turning our car around and heading straight back down south. Uh, in former Yugoslavia, they usually have a lump of butter on pizza. I thought it was... Ice cream to start with. Now, ice cream on pizza. Now you're talking. That does sound good. How about having a Sussex flag, says Linda Kane. Um, yes. Well, I I have to say, I'm not... I'm not... I, I, I'm like Sussex very much. I think it's fascinating. I've just not taken, personally, with this Sussex flag business. It... I don't know. There's something... There's something a bit odd about it. I, I I just I I don't can't put my finger on it. It's I have no reason. I have no. Re this is honest. I have no reason not to want to have a Sussex flag, but for some reason. I feel distanced by it, and I don't know why. I can't explain that. There's no rationale for that at all. So, um, for, uh, yes, I just. That and the whole business about Sussex and when I interviewed that chap who was uh, trying to sort of get everyone to talk about Sussex and not have West Sussex and East Sussex, the county is very long, it's very long and wide, and I I I do find having West Sussex and East Sussex useful when talking about where places are, but then referring to Sussex as one thing, I that's fine, you know, I live in Sussex, but whereabouts? Well, in West Sussex. And I find that a useful thing. But to have a flag, uh, do all the counties have their own? I guess they do. But um, it's, it's bad enough now trying to get everyone, to, you know, not to have the English flag either taken by the National Front or by footballers. I, I want to be able to hold up my St George's flag because I'm a proud Englishman. And I also want to be able to have my British flag because I'm a proud British person. Um and I don't know that there's room for another one, but that that's me. I have no reason to not want the flag. So that's it. Or the flag or the rape you're in. I'm guessing Bramber rape. Yes, I'm in the Bramber rape. People may not quite understand what we mean by rape. Um, very old word, of course. Cornish and yellow flag. Oh, Steve Pilfer says you should fly the flag of Sussex. You said, see, that's interesting. I, I, I can't, I don't know why. It feels alien to me, the flag. Maybe it's because I wasn't introduced to it as a kid. 
Um, it, I, I have no warmth. I don't feel warm to it. I warm to the British flag because as a child we did have... I remember going to the cinema and they would play the national anthem at the end of a film. I remember that. And I remember we always used to have to stand up at the end of a film in the cinema. Um, I'm not quite sure if they did that in the theatre. I didn't go to the theatre quite as often as I went to the cinema, but we used to stand up at the end of a film. I mean, it was bizarre. Um, and so I warmed to that and the St George's flag, of course. So maybe that's why. I've, I, that may be the reason. It's just not... Um, it seems like it's being foisted by people to say, no, oh, yeah, you know, you've got to have this. And I'm not quite sure. Henry says you're often... Um, you often see Cornwall and Devon flags on cars. That's interesting. I mean, it's interesting. I, I need to pay more attention to that. Lancashire first, then British, then English. Good for you, Alex. That's that's very nice. Uh, Linda Kane says East and West Sussex are purely administrative. Um, that may, yes, that may be true. That may be true. I mean, I make a point when I do my videos, and if I say where something is. I'll always say if it's in East Sussex or West Sussex because it's just useful because some of those villages you may not ever, you know, other people outside of Sussex may never have heard of it. And to say it's, it's such a big, long county, it's so so useful. You go, oh, it's over in East Sussex. I, I know where to look then. And in West Sussex, I know, you know, I know where to look. I find that, I just I just do. I find that, in, I find that useful. Um, but people are welcome. By the way, you are welcome to disagree with me, of course. And we're all welcome to our opinions, by the way. We're still we are still allowed to have our opinions. And do you know what? You can disagree with mine and we can still be friends. So I get that. Just make that absolutely clear. Uh, Elizabeth Housen says I'm from the Isle of Wight uh, and known as a cork head. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Cork as in C-U-L-K. Corkhead, that's interesting. I don't like the Cornish free movement down here. We can be very insular. Poor old Mark, I'm sorry about that. Linda says you can refer to the V west of Sussex or the East Sussex, but it's you can prefer to the V oh the, the very west of Sussex or the east of Sussex, but it is just Sussex. Well, yes, but then Tunbridge Wells well, Tunbridge Wells is sort of just on the on the border, isn't it? But if you were just over like Groombridge or somewhere or you're just in a little bit further, you know, you're not necessarily on the far east, are you? You're you're or if you're in the middle, like Uckfield is, is in East Sussex, but it's not on the far east, is it? And it, it's not in it's not in the west, but it's not really in the middle either. So. Um, whatever, really. Oh, here we go. Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm says, um, I was trying to get onto that. We're, we're over the time now, ladies and gentlemen. I've got things to do, people to see, phone calls to make, letters to write and blue screens to correct. Soon. Malcolm says, it seems that county councils are all vying with each other to have a county flag. Uh, yeah, there you go. It started with Cornwall. Now it seems a one upmanship thing. We have a flag here in Diddleshire, so we're a proper county, not like our neighbours in Buncombeshire that only has a crappy coat of arms. Yes, I can see exactly. I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not convinced about the flag business. I'm not. You know, because why? What? What's the purpose of the flag? What is the purpose of the flag? That's what I would like to know. What is the purpose? Why? Why? Um, what are you saying when you fly the flag? Other than you're from Sussex. What? What does that mean? It. It. It starts. To, it does start to you know i mean we're told we're told now we can't be we can't be proud of our nation because that makes us a, na a nationalist a nationalist now if you're if you're proud of your nation oh that's very bad now it's very bad to be a proud of your nation because it's you know that hollers to the uh, the old way of thinking and it makes you far right apparently uh, let's not go down this road on the Vogue show because the, the, you'll you'll rile up the wrong spirits here. But it seems now if you get into this, I mean, you know, you can have your Sussex flag if the Sussex cricket team are playing uh, against, uh, you know, because that's a sporting event against another sporting event. I see that, but but what what is the what is the flag doing? It is that not making you? It's making us more them and us, isn't it? It's we've got this and you've got that. Um, 
you know, people now are frightened to to have the the St George's flag because they think that turns them into a member of the National Front. If there's not a football match going on, you're not supposed to be proud to be English anymore. English is one of those things that, you know, you can be proud Scottish and you can be proud Welsh, but apparently you can't be proud English, you can't be proud of English food or anything that happens in the English thing because... You know, we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to do. It. I don't want to. Let's not argue, argue to, to the end. Um, Malcolm says he's a British Scot. Cheryl says loads of cars up here have Northumberland flags. Um, I can understand them being on on number plates and things like that as a, as a symbol of oh blue screen. Here we go. So I can see all that. Uh, so yeah, the they should start playing the national anthem again at cinemas and the theatre. Says. <laughs> says Henry. Yes, maybe I'll play out with the national anthem. That would be good. Um, don't tell him we're on overtime, says Kevin Hall. Henry says, when I go to Sussex, I usually get the wrong Sussex, and so I just say Sussex. Um, is there another Sussex then? You get to the wrong, wrong... Linda says, the flag for East Sussex and West Sussex shouldn't be flown except outside town halls. Well, who... who is that... What, is that law? Is that law? Is there a flag for... Is that, don't tell me there's now a flag for East and West Sussex. That's even worse. Um, Claire Leach says she's a European. Well, I'm a member of the world when it comes to that. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of the world, but I'm English. I'm English. I'm not from Mars. Apparently, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. So I read in a book once. Um, Tunbridge Wells is in Kent. Yes, it's, it is in Kent. But you take a foot, take a foot to the to the. Uh, if you're looking north, take a foot to the left, take a foot to the west, and you're in Sussex again, aren't you? Um, it's right, it's right on the border. I went through Tunbridge Wells earlier today and Crobra. Thank you, Alex. Uh, actually, my wife has just said I'm Queensland first. All right, fair dues. Robert Crosser says the purpose a bit like a dolphin. Yes, what's the purpose of a dolphin? That's true. Kevin also says Cynthia Walder would have had two flags. I think her house is in one county and her garden is in another. Oh, well, there we are. Look at that. Oh, blimey. Trying to get to the end of the show. We're trying to get to... I wish I'd never started with this flag business. Uh, we should all be under one flag. Wonderful behind... Uh, that wonderful one behind Richard. There we go. There we are. This is the, that's the flag all we need, we need. Mark says it used to rally people as in wars. In the old days, troops would rally to their flag. Yes, I can. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, it, I think there's something to be said for heraldry. I think that's very important. Maybe, you know, Linda, I'm coming round. I'm coming round to your point of view that there is a place uh, for the flag. And I can see that if your team is doing this or you, you're having it on your car part of the number plate so you can, you know, uh, I, I can see all of that. Um, I think you know, a bit of flag waving can sometimes annoy people, but, but that's what people can let them get annoyed, basically, let them get annoyed. We're all under the union flag, but people are proud of their county. I'm I'm proud of my county, definitely proud of my county. Um, and that's true. That is very true. Um, and maybe that's, you know, I've got no argument, really. It's just not my thing. It's not my, I've got absolutely no problem with anybody else flying the Sussex flag or whatever flag is, you know, it doesn't make me annoyed or anything like that. I'm just, I don't put, I don't warm to it in the same way as I warm to the English, the, the, the Red Cross, uh, the Red Cross, yes, um, and the British flag. I just, you know, I'm still proud of Sussex, but I just don't, I don't feel the need. I don't feel the need to hoist the flag for Sussex as such. Um, but that's probably down to my upbringing and what have you. And, you know, and I have absolutely, you know, no qualms at all. I think it's it's, it's great that people um, have have their want to fly the flag. I think that's great. It just does nothing for me. That's what well, that's all I'm saying. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to I'm not belittling it and I'm not arguing against it. It just for me, it, I it 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 doesn't it doesn't stir me. I suppose that's what it is. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Flags gave you identity uh, and where to muster in battle. Yes, things have changed though now. You know, I, I mean that's right. I mean I think there's probably a use for it, but luckily we don't march under the flag at the moment. Uh, eat your radishes. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm digging a big hole. Let's not dig any more on that front. Let's get to the radishes. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Here are the radishes. 
And um, now I'm going to I'm going to zoom in because I can do this. And I'm going to uh, see what we've got inside. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I don't really know how to do this. I might tip. I might tip these. I might do it this this way. I've not. I've never harvested using Richard Suggett's words. I've never harvested radish, radishes. Come on, you buggers. Yeah, they're coming, ladies and gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Suggett. If that is a radish... Well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing. Not even one. I just... <laughs> absolute crap. What a complete... And now I've got soil all over my laptop, all over the desk, and not even one radish. Not one. Not one single. Not even a tiny little pea-sized radish. I've just got root. That's all I've got. I've got puny little leaves... And a root. And for 50p over in Morrison's at the back of my house, I can have a packet of radishes. Blimey. Grow your stuff yourself. What is the point? What is the point? God, blimey. It's a, what a, an absolute liberty. That was a letdown. The big finale. The big finish, ladies and gentlemen. And all I've got is just one poxy little root. Nothing. Absolutely. Just what, what a complete... Let's talk about flags for the next two hours. <laughs> I want to. I want to throttle him. <laughs> I gotta throttle that Mister Suggett when I see him. Dear oh dear oh dear. I don't know. What can you do? Let's adjust my screen. Ah. Uh, so there we are. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your comments. Sorry, I may not have got to all the ones at the end. It's uh, we just got into a very interesting subject then uh, about flags and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's. Uh, that's that's good. Linda says in some instances I think people says it's better than the other. I'm not quite sure what you what you mean. Hampshire is only just acquired one. How do you acquire one? Does someone just come up with the idea? They're known as micro micro herbs. That's a micro herb. It's like a microaggression, if you ask me. Uh, you soiled yourself. Yes, thanks, Dan. I've soiled myself. Good job we had the flags to chat about. Yes, absolutely. What a load. Did you water them? Need yes, I was watering them. They they were in a wash with water. I mean, not even a, I've not even a tiny bulb of a of a radish. This is ridiculous. I've given you thirteen minutes of my precious time. <laughs> is Mister Suggett out there? Is he's out there? Bloody cheek. He's got a nerve. I'll have him. I'll have him the next time I see him. I'll, I've nurtured these things. Never again. And going back to my trees. My oak trees are doing very well. They're in big pots. They're outside. And I've got... When I was with Kevin Hall and we were filming at that... Uh, excuse me, that little chapel that we did a video around, I picked up some conkers. Well, now I've got shoots about five inches Lovely shoots coming out. Lovely they are. They're growing in pots outside the front of my house. Kevin, if you're coming in on Friday, I don't know if you're playing golf with your mate, but let me know. But if you're coming on Friday, um, you'll see the shoots from the conkers we picked up from uh, from the, the conker tree, the, the conker tree at the church, that big Victorian church with the chapel at the back, wherever it was, in Milan. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We obviously planted them upside down. Yes, thanks, Robert. We, that's exactly what we did. You must have... Uh, I think you must have dug them up too soon. Yeah, more than... Mr Suggett told me they were ready. They were ready. He said it's fine. They're ready. They're not ready. They're dead. They're going in the bin. What a waste. What an absolute waste. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, do take care. I will be hopefully back next Wednesday. I'm not quite sure what my diary looks like, but I'll put a message on the Vogue show... 
Take care, one and all. Thanks for joining me. Until I see you again, when you hear that music, you know it's the end of the show. Goodbye! <laughs>